Hi, welcome to Casual F Sharp. Today we're going to be talking about pattern matching. Pattern matching is something that confuses some uh, developers who come in from other languages because it does do some things that other languages can't do, um, with some notable exceptions. Um, so let's dive straight into it. Pattern matching is basically a way of branching your code depending on data. And I guess the simplest kind of pattern matching might be just on an integer literal value. So we could say something like let describe int i b and then just match on the value of i. So always say match and then some value and then with. And then you list the values you want to hit with vertical bars between them like this. So when it's a one, we could return, let's say the word one. And then the next vertical bar introduces the next case. So then we could maybe say two. And if I stop at that point, and this is very important, you'll see I've got a green squiggly under the eye, and that says incomplete pattern matches on this expression. For example, the value zero may indicate a case not covered by the patterns. You can go ahead and compile like that, but you're obviously risking a runtime crash if some other value goes in there. So let's say have our catch-all expression, which is that. So that's kind of like the default case in another language. And let's say we'll just always return the string many in this case. So that's a function which is going to take a value i and return the string 1 when i is 1, 2 when i is 2, and otherwise many. Just give that a whirl, send it to F-sharp interactive. Let's describe 2 for the sake of argument. Let's describe a thousand. Now, I have to say, I don't often pattern match on integer values like that, or indeed literals, um, but it just gives you the syntax. Now let's make it a bit more complicated. Let's say we want a little function which tries to get the first value in a list if there is a, anything in the list at all, and otherwise returns the uh, F-sharp none value. Uh, which indicates there's no data. So I'm going to call this try first. I'm going to give it an argument called items, and that's going to be a list of strings. Again, we say match. We always have the value we want to match on. And then the cases are a bit different. They're more about shape this time. So the first case is the literal for an empty list. In that case, we return the special value none. And that should say items. And at that point, once again, just to re-emphasize, we're getting incomplete matches, a warning for that. Then we're going to say this, which looks a bit obscure, but it's a very common pattern in F-sharp. Um, what we're saying here is that we're trying to match on a list that consists of at least one initial value joined onto, and that's the list joined a single value onto an existing list operator, the cons operator. And we're also saying we don't care what's in the rest of the list. So actually I could equally have said something like rest there. Then in that case, initially I'm just going to say, actually let's say first there for clarity. Well, I kind of want to return that first value from the function, but I'm going to get an error here because we initially said we were returning an option type, an F-sharp option type, but this isn't an option type, so we just need to wrap it in an option type so both the code paths return the same type. That seems to work. Now, rest is grey because we're not using the rest of the list, so I'm going to change that back to this kind of magic value name here, which means I don't care about that value. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit more concise by restoring the F there. Right, let's send that to interactive. And let's try getting the first value from an empty list. There we go. A non-empty list, but with just one value in. Get that first value. There's more than one value. We still get that same first value back. So here, we've done pattern matching 
on the shape effectively of a list. Is it an empty list or is it a list containing at least one item with possibly a tail to the list that we don't care about? We can do more snazzy pattern matching on lists if we like. Let's say we want a function that just prints the first few items of a list. So let's call it items again actually. String list. Again. Uh, and you might guess that we'll start with something very similar. And this time, this is going to be an imperative function, which just prints something rather than returns something. So that's the empty case. Let's say there's exactly one item in the list. The pattern for that is this. So here, we're saying we want a list with exactly one item in it. And henceforward, within this branch, we're going to call the value that we recover from that one item A. And we can print that out. Another case would be, let's say, uh, a list with exactly two items. So print A and B. And let's say, well, we could have like this catch all case here, but maybe we actually want to look at, into that value that's recovered. So we could say uh, a list consisting of one item and another item, and then a tail which we ignore. something like that. So we're getting the first two, ignoring the rest, but still printing something different from the previous case. And f -sharp's very smart. It knows now you've covered all the possibilities, so we didn't get the green squiggly that we got when we don't have that final case. Once again, let's try it out. There we go. So that's pattern matching based on the shape and content of a list. Now, if we return back to this try first example here, the question does become, what are we actually going to do with the value that we create that is an option type? Remember, the signature of this function goes to string option. Well, maybe we want to print it out or something, or maybe we want to default it. So let's say we want to do a kind of first or default thing. I'm going to give this a slightly funny name because I think default is probably a keyword. Again, take a string list. We're going to call our try first to get this back as an option type. And again, we're pattern matching. And this, we're, this time, we're pattern matching on the possible values sum and none, which are the two things that you can have with an option type. So if try first items comes back with a sum value, we'll recover it and call the recovered value x, and we'll just return it. In the none case, which doesn't have a payload, so you don't need to say x there, what do we want to return? The default value we specified as an argument here, which I've spelled wrongly. There we go. Let's try that out. Let's try that on an empty sequence. And we need to provide some default. There we go. If there is a value, we get the first value back. So that is pattern matching on the option type. 
but actually really that's just a special case of pattern matching on a discriminated union and that's really where I want to get to with this little talk because uh, pattern matching on discriminated unions does seem to be the thing which confuses people because you're kind of doing like a almost like a backwards construction so let me illustrate that by making myself a new type this is let's say I've taken against the option type for some reason I want to replace it I'm going to call my replacement summit now I'm going to call my replacement mayhap which is a kind of a Yorkshire north of England dialect word for possibly uh, and I'm going to actually make this a generic type so the payload can be any type sorry that should say type and the, not surprisingly perhaps, the syntax for discriminated union echoes pattern matching in that you use these vertical bars to mark the cases. Uh, and again in Yorkshire dialect, if we actually have something, we're going to call it summit. And the payload of that is going to be this generic type T, which at runtime or at usage time, let's say, might be a string, might be an integer, might be anything. And then the other case, again, Yorkshire dialect is going to be nout for nothing, and that doesn't have a payload. So that exactly matches the way the option type works, except the option type does have a bit more decoration uh, to make it more friendly to non-F-sharp languages, which, by the way, is something you might not like, and you might actually want to define your own type like this. Then we're going to make a version of the try first function. I'm just going to copy that, stick it down here after the type definition of mayhap, and I'll just call that try first too. And this time the return values are just going to be renamed to the cases from our type that we just defined above. So that works absolutely fine. So now we're going to see how to pattern match on these DU cases. So let's say we're going to take a copy of our first order fault function. Call that first order fault two. And we're going to mirror again the naming of our cases from our mayhap type. And we just need to make sure that we're calling the second version. And there we go. So now we've got something that works in terms of our own discriminated union. Try to make a bit more room, which we defined up here. We generated uh, values of from here, and then we pattern match back from those possible values back to, in this case, the payload and here some default here. I'm just going to prove that works. So we'll send all this to Sharp Interactive. Let's make sure first or default two works. There we go. And when we give it an empty list, likewise. So let's just look really carefully at the pattern matching here. What we're saying here really is that to hit this case, we must have created uh, the value that comes back from here using the summit case and a payload. And it's like a time machine. You can get back from that instantiation to the payload that must have been provided when this instance was created. Likewise here, we use our time machine to get back. Well, we're not to a payload because there isn't one but we just know that there was not a payload because the case label, as it were, is nout, so we know we can use the default. Uh, and this is what, really what people find confusing with uh, pattern matching of a discriminated union is this kind of backwards construction. So here we're not creating an instance uh, using a value x, we're recreating a value x from an instance. So it's like backwards construction. And that's the key point I want to make here. So just a very quick recap. Pattern matching initially looks like a case statement with value labels and branches to go to, but it very quickly 
goes to something more sophisticated where you can branch on the shape of data. You can branch on discriminated union cases like option types or some discriminated union that you've defined yourself. And that's all for your initial understanding of matching in F-sharp.